What is rounding? Rounding is the process we go through when we don't need a number to be quite so accurate. So rounding doesn't change the ultimate size of the number, it just makes it slightly less accurate. So when should we round and when should we not round? So a great time to use rounding is when you need to check answers to sums. But in other situations, to determine whether you should round or not round, you need to consider the consequences of having a less accurate result. Here are two examples. So in the first example, you're asked, how old are you? Now, normally you'd round that to the nearest year. And when you get older, maybe even the nearest 10 years. But for most situations, it's not necessary to know the answer to the nearest month or week or day. So rounding is appropriate here. In the second example, we're measuring a room to get a new carpet. Now, if you were to measure the room and then round everything to the nearest metre, the consequences are that you'll either end up with a gap because you've rounded down or it's going to cost you extra because you've rounded up and you've bought more than you need. So that's how you can decide whether or not you're using the right level of accuracy and you're rounding too far or too much. Now we're going to get into the actual rounding process itself. There are two main ways that you will be asked to round. So the first is rounding to decimal places, abbreviated to D dot P dot. I'm going to go through this example and then we'll talk about the second type that you can see on the right hand side. So for decimal places, we're being asked to round the number 25.783 to two decimal places. So the first thing that we need to do is put a line that indicates where the end of those two decimal places are. So we count when it's decimal places, we count from the decimal point to work out where to put that line. So let me just write that down. We want to count from the decimal point. Went two places from the decimal point and that's where I knew to draw the line in. To help you better understand the rounding process, I'm going to start with what you might feel is a bit more of a long winded approach, but hopefully that will get you the real understanding of rounding. And then later on, I'm going to show you how to reduce that right down to a shorter way to do it. So for this one, we're going to draw part of a number line. And on the first part of the number line, you're going to put the number that's in front of the line, the whole thing. So in this case, that's 25.78. Now, at the other end of this little section of the number line, you're going to put the same number, but you're going to add one to the very last part of it. So that would make it 25.78. Nine. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to work out what would be halfway between these two numbers. So that would be 25.785. Next, we're going to mark with a cross the number that we were originally given on this section of the number line. So we've got 25.783 which is less than 25.785, so it would be about here on the number line. And then all we've got to ask ourselves now is which end is it closest to? So we can see it's closest to 25.78, and therefore that is what it will round to. Because when we round, we either take a small amount off or we add a small amount on, but we want to change it in the smallest way possible. 
Now we're going to switch and have a look at how we would tackle this same question, but if we were asked to round it to significant figures. Now, with significant figures, instead of counting from the decimal point, we start with the first number. As long as that number is not zero. So it's the first number that is not zero. That's how we start. So in this case, the two is the first number that's not zero. So the second significant figure is the five. And so this time our line is going to go in here. Now from here on, it's exactly the same process as we used for the decimal places. So I'm going to draw the part of the number line. We're going to put 25 here because that's what's in front of that line. We're going to add one to this bit to work out what goes on this end. And then we're going to work out what goes in the middle, which will be 25.5. And then we're going to put 25.783. We're going to mark where that would be roughly on the diagram. And again, we're going to ask ourselves which end is it closest to? And this time it's closest to 26. So that is our answer this time. There are one or two things that come up that you need to be aware of. So we're going to do several more examples so that we can demonstrate all of these things so you really understand it. In this case, we're asked to round 1,234.567 to two decimal places. So again, I'm going to put the line in and it goes in there. We draw our diagram and we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4.56. Then remember, we add one to just that last part to get the other end. Now we're going to go for our middle. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, point five, six, five. And now we're going to mark with a cross where one, two, three, point five, six, seven is, which would be about here. And we're going to ask ourselves which end is it closest to? So this time it's closest to one, two, three, four, point five, seven. Now we're going to do the significant figures one. So here the first number that is not zero is right at the beginning. It's a one and then followed by a two. So our line's going to go in here. Here's our diagram. So at the front of this diagram, we're not just going to write 12. Why? Because the 1 and the 2 that are in front of that line aren't 110 and 2 units. It's 1,200. So we're going to write 1,200 in this case. And at this end, it will be 1,300. So we're still adding one to that part, but because of the values, the place values of these numbers, it's not quite as straightforward as just writing down 12 and 13. So halfway between those will be 1,250. And our number is 1,234 point something. So that would sit about there on the number line. So this time that one would round to 1,200, 1,200. Here's our next example. So again, rounding to two decimal places. Of course, they don't always ask two decimal places. So if it's three, you go three. If it's one, you only go one along and so on. So two decimal places again. So we're going to put our line in here. Let's do our diagram. So at the beginning, we're going to have 0.03. At the end, we're going to have 0.04. And halfway is going to be 0.035. 
and ours is 0.034 something so that's going to be just before that and so that will round to 0.03 over to the significant figures version so remember these zeros that you can see at the beginning don't count so the first one that counts as a significant figure is the three so the second one is a four so our line's going to go in here this time once you've got that line in the rest is all exactly the same so we're starting with 0 0.034 so this one will be 0 0.035 and halfway will be 0 0.0345 and ours is 0 0.0347 so that would sit roughly there on the number line and so that's going to round to 0 0.035 now I'm going to show you how we can shorten that whole process and cut out doing the diagram. So still two decimal places and we're still going to start by putting in the lines. So for the decimal places that's going to go there. Now what we now need to think about is what is after the line. So that number, the first number after the line is a 5. So if it's a 5 or more that means we're going to go up so we're going to go to the end not the beginning if we think about our diagram if it was less than five then we will round down and that means that our answer will be the one that's at the beginning of our diagram normally which is obviously just the number that you have in front of the line so in this case we see we've got a 5 so that means we're going to go up so that means that remember to find the end of our number line we just add 1 to the last part which in this case is a 2 of what's before that line so that's our answer let's do the significant figure version so this time two de significant figures means that line's going to go in here let's look at what's after the line so this is a four so that means it's going to be a down situation and in a down situation we just keep what's in front of the line however in this case we do need to make an adjustment because the original number was 114.725 so that those two ones are 100 and 110 so we need to reflect that by adding the zero here so that we can see that we're preserving the place value of those ones and writing it as 110 not 11. One final example using this shorter method so two decimal places line's going to go in there we look at what's over on this side and this time it's an eight so it's above five so that means we need to go up so that means we need to add one to that part there which is a nine if you add one to the nine you're going to have to carry over and so you're going to end up with 0.1 that's the correct way to present it it's not 0 0.10 we never say our decimal numbers that way because it isn't 10 10 is a number that appears on the other side of the decimal point so don't keep the zero if it helps you to think of it that way then that's fine but don't say it that way and don't write it that way so it's this and not this and let's complete this by doing the significant figure one again so remember we can't count those zeros so the first one is nine and then the eight put the line in there we look at what's after that line which is a five so that means it's going to go up and so we're going to have 0.099